Hi, this is Chris Mick and I would like to talk about the Beatles now and then this file. Well, I don't want to criticize. There are lots of critics out there saying the mastery is right into the face, too much compression, whatever. But I, I think it's very emotional, of course, and uh, I thought about the technology behind it because Peter Jackson has this software. Uh, it's not on the market right now. I think so. It might be very soon where he separated John Lennon's voice from uh, an old cassette. And I thought, oh, well, I did that years ago. This is not uh, rocket science. And uh, let's try to check uh, how to do that with uh, two programs I'm going to show you right now. What we all have to think about is the implication of uh, such technologies. You could take these vocals and use them in a different surrounding or in, in, on, on a different track. And uh, the royalty question rises up again. And I remember I've been at, uh, in Barcelona at Pompeo Fabra University, that's 15 years ago. And they had a, a software that uh, faked human voice. Vocaloid is on the market in Japan, very great, big now, and it still sounds artificial, but um, 15 years ago they had, they had the idea, what about if we can fake the, the vocals or the voice of Elvis or Frank Sinatra in real time while somebody is singing into the microphone, and this would be a billion dollar business because every karaoke bar out there uh, would be great fun uh, if you get in there, you sing with your humble voice and you sound like Frank Sinatra. And another uh, aspect is this royalty thing. So there's a big package in there, but the core of it all, how does such uh, software work? I don't know how Peter Jackson's works. Maybe it's online very soon and you have to pay for it and, and you, you do that online. I think Rick Beato, he, he did it somewhere. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on the market already, but what's on the market is uh, um, Spectral Layers by Steinberg and Isotope RX10 and I'm going to show you now with one file how you're going to do that. And in the end I have to say the emotion in music is most important to me, not that technology. And I love this song. It's not a typical Beatles song, it's a, it's a John Lennon song for me. But the whole emotion and the video is very well done and there's no arguing about it. I, I really love it. And those were the days guys. I'm an old man. I grew up with that. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, here's this file. It's from an album I made. Uh, it's called Forgotten Rock. You can check it on Apple Music or wherever on YouTube. Chris Mick, Forgotten Rock. It's called Good and Bad Times and this is how it sounds. Yes, let's go to the start. I got a feeling Everything is gonna change to the best. Every day in my life. It's this Prince thing, you know, and there's a lot of reverb and delay in there. And uh, so it's not easy to separate the voice from the rest because there's a lot of reverb on it and you listen to this I got a feeling. yes uh, but in a way uh, you can listen to the voice uh, quite good it's mixed uh, into the front and it's not too hard to do that so how do i do it i go into the extensions under the audio here and i put in uh, spectral layers and here you see I got a spectral analysis of this file and within the spectral layers there are many different things you can do and I can demix the song and say just the vocals. This is German but it's, it's quite easy and I could say uh, the quality should be the best and I just say OK and then you're gonna see what will be happening it's demixing the vocal from the rest of the arrangement and in the end it will appear down here and you can have a <laughs> listen what's happening there it's really that easy quite easy i couldn't could do that with other instruments also that's not a, and here's uh, this sound this is the singing i try to duplicate it and the duplicate 
duplicated file I put in here and listen to this now. I solo it and here it is. I got a feeling. That's crazy, yes? Everything is gonna change to fast. So this was easy. What to do now? I can bounce it into a file and uh, look for silence in there and do that manually, but uh, I can also uh, go there and go into this different things here. I can say uh, D, uh, put off the reverb. That was not possible a couple of years ago, but now it is possible. Uh, first of all, I, I have to put this here into, um, I bounce it, that it's it's a file, yes. And once it's a file, I can say reduce uh, the reverb. And uh, I don't do, let's say, let's start with 60% or something like that, because 100% might be too much and just do like that. And now it's again doing its work. And after that, we can have a listen what happened to the vocals here. You see, it takes some time. This is a, a M1 processor, ARM processor. It's a Mac Studio. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of work to do for the algorithm. So it's not that easy. And uh, let's listen. I got a feeling. You see, now it's gone. Everything is going to change too fast. fast. And you see, now it comes to its boundaries here. Uh, I, I would say, um, yeah, let's keep it like 20% or something like that. And uh, in the end, I have a new file here and I can do all these things with the file uh, that you can do with it. I can put in um, SSL channel strip here or bus compressor and ah, it's over compressed anyway. But uh, if I put in the channel strip, <clears throat> I can use my UC1 here and do something about the file. Let's have a listen. I got a feeling. More frequencies here. Everything is gonna change too fast. Ah, oh, it's coming into the middle here. Yes. Uh, anyway, I, I can do many things with this file here and just to polish it. And in the end, I have two um, tracks here. The one with the original. I got a feeling. Everything is going to change too fast. And the good thing about it, uh, I can keep the original file or I, I even can take, uh, if I would have said within a spectral layers, uh, demix everything here and I have all the other tracks demixed. I, can, I have this sort of stems and I can do a whole new uh, arrangement out of that and go into the vocals and, and edit it and uh, do whatever I want to, yes. So it's it's not that complicated. But there's another uh, software that is supposed to do that. That's, uh, um, I don't know, it's RX10, I think. Uh, let's have a look at that one, how good this one works. Okay, here's the next program, Astop RX10, and uh, I... I got a feeling. And they call the process music rebalance, and I say just vocals, not bass, percussion, others. Quality best, separation, just say render. And it's a little bit faster than the spectral layers. Okay, here we go. And then let's have a listen to that. I got a feeling. Ah. Everything is going to change too fast. There's a lot of ambience and uh, humming inside and what's going on in the background. It sounds a little bit more artificial in my ears. You can make up your own mind if, if that's okay. But I got a feeling. Sort of flanging sound and... Uh, Everything is going to change too But you can go then and de-click, de-crackle, de-s, de-hum, de, -crackle, de, -hum, de It's this industry standard. So you see both programs do the job. Uh, in my ears, uh, Spectral Layers, this one job does better what uh, RX10 may do better in other um, parameters here. But... Um, well, you can try it on your own. Just download some demos and uh, take an old Beatles song or your own song or whatever song you want to have and isolate the vocals and 
make it a file and uh, turn it around. But um, don't forget uh, <laughs> that there are royalties and... Uh, so that's the reason why I took my own file here. But maybe you had some fun with that and just try it and see you next time. Chris?